So let me introduce you to our moderator, Divya Catherine Joy. As I mentioned, she is the product manager at Amazon Pay India, owning her third party online merchants ch charter to enable the fastest and most convenient, trusted and rewarding way of customer to pay. Well, that's something we, that's an everyday thing for us, I must say, at least for me. And, and she has 15 plus years of experience comprising software engineering, business intelligence, delivery management and product management. So Dibya will be taking over the session. She's the moderator of the session. And I would like to invite Purnima and Vijaya on the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Are we good to start? Yes. Am I good? No. Just, uh, just, just keep them in your pocket. Just have a seat. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you for IPA. Thank you for having us here. I'll just quickly introduce our panel. Um, I am I am thrilled to be here with product people who are in the industry and I'm meeting it first time. Um, I think in two three minutes itself we could connect to each other. So I wish you are enjoying the sessions. Um, quickly introducing uh, Purnima Mohandas. Uh, she is a I I am very sure you have not heard this kind of a transforming. I know you must not be in any of the, those kind of transformation. She was a business journalist. Now converted into a product marketer. She worked in companies like Calidus <laughs> okay. Cloud and Bird Eye managed multi-million worth dollar SaaS products. Currently, it's more interesting what she has done. Currently, she's owning her own company. She's having a product marketing blog and a consulting company. Uh, she is trying to help any startups who wants to position I mean, do their uh, GTM and market strategy, anybody who is planning to start, she's the person for that. Um, thank you for coming and honored to be sharing the stage with her. Thank you. Thank you for the warm introduction. So good to be here. Now we have Vijaya. Um, Vijaya Annapurna, she's a global product manager. So the mix is completely different. Um, Vijaya has different varieties of roles, different companies, different kind of projects. Uh, she was a project manager, program manager, product owner. Now she's a global manager. She also worked in companies like Nokia, Intuit, Herman, and now at Signify. I'm not sure whether you have heard of Signify. This is the uh, Philips Lighting, Philips Lighting was a former company, now she's taking care of the lighting cabinet, right, yeah. So she has also experience in mobile, automobile and uh, the lighting. I am I'm seeing people with different, you know, varieties of roles here. Uh, I am excited, actually more than you guys here now. Uh, and another turn to her, oh, she's a yoga practitioner, she read a lot. And if at all you want to understand or share some life experience, Vijay is the person. She's ready to actually mentor people. She helps teams to achieve better. Um, thank you, Vijay, for coming. Uh, welcome to the session. Uh, thank you so much for the warm introduction. Um, I want to thank our audience because I was talking to one of uh, uh, employees. I just met from Harman because that was my ex-company. And we saw so many... Um, students playing out in the uh, uh, you know the, the, this, uh, the, the common area there, and they said, "See, 
um, the moment we think about holidays or a weekend, oh my God, oh, we had an exhausted week, you just need to relax and do nothing. But think about all of you who have taken out your time from your busy weekends to be with us and hear our stories. I truly appreciate it. Thank you so much. So just setting some expectation, and um, please, um, you can ask now if you, if you have anything else from us. What we will do is we will just try to cover how is our product journey, how we become the product managers or they become the product managers. We'll also touch up on how, uh, what does the skill set or competencies we are, we are looking for. We'll also look at the day-to-day -day life, how is actually we are managing. Maybe we might manage a little bit of less women instead we'll tell more about product and customer because I don't want to do gender instead I'm looking for my customer and product. Okay, thank you. Um, so Vijay, I think I'll start with you. Uh, if you can tell us that how is your journey from program to project, then to uh, product owner, then to a global product uh, manager? I spent rather, I grew up with Nokia for almost 10 plus years. Then Nokia ran down happily, you almost be aware of it. And then I moved to other companies. All the while it was a project and product management, but some point of time, a project and program management. But some point of time, I was always asking myself, is it enough for me to really explore? Because I've seen end to end cycles of projects ranging from um, 500 engineers with the six months to three years altogether, the latest one was. Then I always had this in uh, inclination to understand what really happens out in the markets for whom we are solving these problems, okay? So somebody always gave me requirements and I'm just following it. But do we really have that visibility to really do that? Okay, and that's when the the inclination towards uh, the product management journey has started. It was almost like almost six years back. Now, why I'm saying six years back, when I showed interest that I want to make the shift, you cannot really start from, from jump from here to that step. Now, I'm not a sprinter, even if I practice, so that has to be one step at a time. So what would I do differently or what I've done differently? Uh, when Harman opportunity came through, they were starting their 5G telematics platform, first of its kind, and BMW iMix that was launched last year has a telematics first of the 5G telematics platform inbuilt into it, and I was given opportunity to be the product owner for that. Now, why? I don't have experience in the automobiles, right? I only came from mobile background. So there is one a difference part of it. And the second thing, what, they're, what they kind of appreciated is the fact that only on my attitude part of it, because I want to learn. It's like there was nothing else. You remember that kid, right? What do they say? When they want something, I want this, I want this, I want this. Okay, it, it, it might, doesn't make sense for a parent maybe. I think I followed the same thing because the inner child in me always wanted to go there. What will I do? I say, this is what I know. I know this is what is needed. So give me a chance. I will, I'll go there. I may, I may not jump on the day one itself, but it's going to be an incremental basis, right? So product, uh, the product ownership at the 5G telematics platform happened, and I was with Harman for almost six years. Then I thought, now I'm all equipped to do something different at a global level. And now when I went to Signify, it's all lighting. So think about automobile and lighting. There is, there is no, not, there's nothing relatable there, right? And when I applied for it, I said, I want to become a product manager, full-fledged product manager. This is what my experience, these are my skills, and these are the gaps. Perfectly no problem, give me an opportunity. So I became the child again. And other opportunities came to me when I was planning to shift because I've seen the entire cycle of a 5G telemetry problem, what's next? And then, okay, now this is what I wanted to do. So that when the opportunities come through, it is very, very clear in my mind that why. When somebody was in, in a previous conversation, we were asking our panelists, okay, how do I decide, right? My why was very, very clear. I want this for so and so reasons. The next company should be something who are steadily invested on the sustainability part of it. And I want to become a product manager. This is very clear. If that is not coming, I'm not moving. I'll only go if it's come through. So I think uh, the transition happened and it, it is not only asking for it. There's something else I need to do as for myself, right? I looked up for some internal opportunity and Harman was kind enough to give me that. They saw there was an inclination for me to learn things. I did some small, tiny projects within the organization. Then, then I attended all the product management sessions at 
for example, the one we are seeing right now today. I attended them. I did some sustainability course from IMB online. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I was also working uh, rather interacting with many uh, practicing product managers out there. They said, this is what you think. Because for me, when you're moving from one class to another call, the vocabulary changes. The same thing can happen with our functional areas. Uh, you are a project manager, a program manager, but the moment you shift to product management, the vocabulary should change. You can't say about the execution timelines or anything. There's something else, customer empathy, there's written off investments, what are the what markets? So I actually picked up the vocabulary, okay? And I went through mock-up interviews. I failed. I said perfectly fine because they gave me a good opportunity for me to see where the gaps are. So why is very important your inclination to say that okay i fail but i learn okay it requires lots of data i mean the moment you fail it comes to heaven oh my god am i in the right path it's for you to ask nobody's going out there even no matter no matter how many motivational speeches you will listen to or hear to or speak with end of the day you come back and reflect upon yourself saying that is this what i want Think about a child. What child wants is what I want, and I'll go after it, and I'll get it. And with all humbleness, because I had to draw lots of hats. I mean, running a program for three years with 200 engineers, it was so much of ego on my head. But what I have to do, which means I need to step down, and I also need to back step back. Why? If I don't do it, I will never learn. Because my colleagues, they are younger, and I'm, and then, you know, it's somebody coming with this experience, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. Since I'm the humble kid, I don't know anything about it, but I know what I know, but that doesn't have to be in the product management area, so please help me. And I was fortunate in, in enough that Signify gave me the chance, I mean, after Harman, and my, I have an incredibly core collaborative team. They supported me throughout this one year, since the time I've joined Signify, and, uh, and for the same reason, I'm here talking to all of you. So please get your wise right. And uh, it's okay to fail, but go back and then ask, is this what you want? So she's give it a try. She's saying, thank, thank you. you. The why is correct? Also, we'll keep asking for it. <laughs> yes. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> yeah. So now, Kolima, because you are journey from other than maybe project manager to a product manager versus journalist to a product marketer, what made you think in that direction itself? <laughs> That's the first question. And then how did you make it happen? Actually, it's all very selfish reasons, right? <laughs> so I was a journalist for about five and a half years. I did my mass communications from Symbiosis in Pune. I worked in um, the Hindu business line in Bombay. That was my first job out of college. Uh, I was in business journalism for about five and a half years. Uh, when I had my first child, that's when I decided that I'm not going to work seven days a week and chase daily deadlines um, that I do need to carve out some time for my child. That's when I decided to switch into the tech world uh, because I wanted more discipline, wanted a more organized workplace. Right? It's completely purely selfish reasons. But fortunately for me, at that time, the concept of inbound marketing, uh, if you're familiar with that concept, where well, you know, I can see a lot of nodding heads. So inbound marketing, had become really popular with Marketo and then HubSpot as well, uh, embracing that concept and really pushing that with their, you know, trying to push their marketing automation engines, right? Um, uh, so because of that, uh, hiring managers were actually looking for ex-journalists, right? So that helped, worked in my favor. I first got into content marketing. Um, I, you know, kind of matured in that role. I used to write uh, for executives, ghost write for executives and um, deal with a lot of uh, different, um, um, different departments, different executives. And so basically my CMO at the time saw me mature in that role. And one day he just um, uh, asked me in his office, hey, there's an opportunity in product marketing. Would you like to um, give it a go? And I said, absolutely because I always uh, crave that um, proximity and depth uh, to and closeness to the product, right? I didn't know anything about product marketing, but I just jumped in, head in. And my advice from that would be that, you know, you, whenever you want to make a career transition, it's much easier to make it in the company that you're in, right? In your existing company, build up that street cred, build up your credibility, build that trust, with different stakeholders, different departments, so that they will give you the chance, right? You can ask for it, 
What's the worst that will happen? They'll say no. It's okay. Right? You can ask for it. And if they say yes, go give it a try. Right? So I worked in product marketing. Thankfully, I had a really supportive leader and a very uh, great mentor who showed me the ropes. I worked in that for a few years. At the time, I was working in the San Francisco Bay Area. So I also did a certification from Pragmatic Marketing, which is like the gold standard for PM and PMM certification, right? So I did my certification. And my advice, again, would be that, you know, do get your feet, get your feet dirty, get your hands dirty first before you do a certification course. Because when you do your certification, you can really relate to real life examples from your day to day life. And yeah, so I've, um, you know, in my last job, I built a team of product marketing um, experts based out of India, center of excellence for that. And right now I uh, run my own product marketing consultancy. Yeah. How many of you guys have heard of scalable product? All of us. But how many of you have products, sustainable products? Okay. Now, I think Vijaya wants to share uh, because she talks a lot about sustainability for me. I think a lot of us work in this syndrome where there is goal set, there is learning goals, there is something to achieve, there is customer problems. So we go behind it. We might think about like five years down the line, I think in 10 years back when I was starting to interview, where do you want to see yourself in three years and five years? I don't think any interviews you get this question. Because a lot of people are like short term, a lot of goals are short term, more than one year there is no goals today, right? So sustainability is something I think we should look forward. And I would like to Vijaya to talk about what is the sustainable product? What, what do you mean by sustainability? Okay, so uh, just a disclaimer. Uh, Signify is one of the global leaders in sustainability part of it. So I'm going to keep that uh, anything we do with this uh, uh, signif uh, Signify out of the conversations, even in terms of what I'm sharing or the questions I'm, I might be expecting from the audience. So please bear with me on that. So um, when uh, COVID struck, right, we, it kind of changed uh, our entire uh, life itself. I mean, the way we think and feel and believe, our entire belief system has changed, okay? And uh, everything everything kind of seems to be okay. I can only buy so much of this brand because we also have rations in terms of what you buy from the shops part of it. So it kind of uh, made me realize, do we really, really need so much uh, for, for our daily, day-to-day -day living? It's more of our perception of how much is so much, correct? So, and then eventually at that point of time, I also moved into practicing yoga as something I passionately believed in. And and then if somebody's practicing yoga, how many of you know Mr. Vasudeva Murthy here? He works, he's with Associate IPL, right? Uh, if possible, do uh, read his book on the Yoga Sutra Simplified, okay? If you're a yoga practitioner, simplicity is what is expected. They say Hita and Mita. Mm -hmm. So that's when I got introduced to yoga and I started looking at the ways of why sustainability has become so crucial for any of us. Now then I thought, okay, um, why do we buy insurance? Why do we buy insurance? <laughs> safe. It's a feel, we want to feel safe about ourselves and the people whom we are responsible for to take care of, right? And then, uh, then when I started yoga, uh, you know, uh, just I'm just only sharing my perspective, right? So there is always, you know, I'm going to come back to this earth in the different form and shape and everything. Mm -hmm. When I'm going to come back to the form and shape and everything, there should be something available for me. So which means I need to save. How will I save that? Because the resources are all limited. If I keep on just using and spending without mindfulness, where will it come from? Because there has to be some way to replenish the everything that's going away from there, right? So that kind of stuck to me in the, the entire process of my journey with with, just, uh, with yoga and then COVID everything for the last two and a half years. I said, whatever I do, it has to be in some sustainable way. So for example, I used to buy lots of junk jewelry. But then I thought, you know, it's, it's, uh, junk jewelry is not something sustainable because something you should be giving back to your children or, or to your family members, right? So that level of thinking. So if you ask me, sustainability is a conscious living. 
okay it has to be part of your dna it's not just see um, we have a water bottle we're just thinking okay i'm going to talk about sustainability but i'm drinking water from this bottle here and now please bear with me because uh, the process is available i just still manage with it right so uh, what happens we need to keep on thinking uh, evaluating it right it's not just not for about uh, you know changing your bulb into something else or you know throwing away waste paper think about the entire cycle of how you want to make it possible the sustainability is also including up your own head Okay, it starts from there. Unless you believe it here and here, the, the DNA system will not change. If you do not change that, it will not reflect in the work that you do. How can I do it differently? Okay, that's a part of it. And the doing it differently should come with empathy, should come with care. Because it's, I'm caring for myself, but I'm also creating something for me when I come back here in different form and shape. Okay, so I go and talk about sustainability in, in multiple levels on board, and I promote it, and also invest my time uh, in the activities with, as part of the CSR activities in the organization. So, like I said, it's very very generic topic. It requires uh, a lots of uh, mindset change. It took me; it's not just one day again. It's two three years, and it's it's all came together because of whatever instances or situation I went through. So it's more of a conscious decision. How do you want to live your life? How much you really want? If in the given situation, can you do it in a way that's reusable, recyclable? All five parts of the cyclical economy are we really thinking about it, right? If you all know about the SDG, uh, the UN SDG, United Nations Sustainability Development Goals, they are part and parcel of all the major organizations' websites. If you go and check there, sustainability is a word there, and all the CEOs. Paychecks are directly related to the how much of the goals have been achieved. Each and every company, major companies that we talk about, at least five to six goals they contribute to. Okay, so that's why it's important to me. I mean, I'm not getting into generics part of it. So it's very dear to me, and I I want to do whatever I can do to make sure that my return journey, so everything is arranged. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so would you share your part? What are you sharing with me, Joy? <laughs> So, for me now, question to you is that it's a startup. It's something you are running on your own. How is your day to day looks like? You know, because you have kids, you live with your husband and kids in Bangalore. You have everything you have to manage on your own. How do you manage? How is your day look like? Well, your day is what you make of it, right? That's the best part when you <laughs> run your own business. You can be as busy or as busy as you want to be, and there's no end to. when it's your own business right there's no end to how much you can work uh, there's always something more to do something more to do it's really about managing your to do list and your expectations right so if you set your objectives um you know right based on what are your goals uh, for the year maybe and then how many clients do you need to have uh, what what does your pipeline look like right now and then work with uh, you know work with your current clients at the same time be managing your a uh, pipeline as well so it it's a lot of dealing with um, you know different clients different meetings everything is on zoom these days uh, sometimes you have in person meetings as well and um, yeah it's a, it's a whole um, <clears throat> marketing strategy to execution piece that i handhold um, uh, companies and startups with um right from positioning whether they're launching a product to their website what are the campaigns they should be running that Do you have any mentors to say that no, you should look, you like check now what what should I do? Do you have mentors to help you with? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, mentors is something you should have uh, at every stage of your career. I would say, uh, and you know, sometimes it, it it takes a while to realize that, but it, there's a lot of value in that. So you know, where, whichever stage of life you're in, seek out those mentors that uh, people that you look up to that you. um uh, think are doing well they could be in the same department or a completely different department as well you know take them out for lunch ask them if they can be your mentor and ask uh, for advice ask for um, you know give give your give the situation that you're perplexed with and you know just ask so you're saying that you you take a conscious effort to build a rapport with Absolutely. somebody and bring that person as a mentor and then try to follow what they are suggesting Uh, How does that work? Do you think what they suggest is all makes sense or no? It depends on the situation, right? I mean, you you seek out advice and you have to be humble about it, of course, right? And so you don't reject anybody's advice upfront. If somebody is spending the time with you, then you of course listen to them. And I think listening 
is the most important thing. Then you have to kind of reflect on, hey, what's working for you, what's not, and take take what you have to uh, from it. Okay, now we'll take a little bit shift. I hope you understood your panelists now in there. Now we'll take a shift on just kind of product management uh, cycle. So just a question to both of you that what do you think are the important competencies you and me should have it? We may not have all of it, but because I know the crowd is looking for it. Because many times I ask this question, everybody may not have to be a product manager. My friend is a product manager. Product manager is a good term to be or the title to be. And this is not the most salaried position now. So you don't have to be a product manager. Do, you, do I have the capabilities to be a product manager? You don't have to be forced with. Just wanted to hear from Purina and Vijaya that what do you think the com right competencies you should have? And if you don't have it, it's not that something not unbuildable. How to build that? Maybe Vijaya, over to you first. Like I said, it's about the why. Make your why clear, right? It's for you to know. And the skills are for others to evaluate it. Remember that. Now, in terms of the skills part of it, one is how good you are at decision making because you are the CEO of your product. Okay, how do you want to build, how you want to roll out, how which markets you want to go about it. So, this requires decision making capability. For that, you need data. Okay, how thoroughly are you acquiring the data from the markets? So, which means, like you already mentioned, you need to keep making those connections. So, are you good at connecting with, the, with, with your stakeholders, right? Stakeholder is not to be like one level, it could be all the levels, right? For example, the stakeholder for being a business owner who is going to be sponsoring the, um, uh, the, the budget for the pro business proposal you're putting through, also to the field engineer who's actually going to implement it out there. So talk to them to understand what the problems is. Second thing, in terms of evaluating the options, how good are you in picking up what is the best possible combination for you to pick it up? Because every possible situ scenario is going to be give, going to give a different kind of results. But then you should be really, really, really good at defining the problem. Because as a product manager, it's not your role to define a solution. Please remember that. That is a responsibility of the R&D engineer sitting out there. They are well equipped to come up with this architecture and design saying, hey, for this as a reason, this is what the solution I'm going to give to them. So have the connection with them to understand this, but make sure the solution that you're going to get from them is in sync with. It's not like I want an orange, but also tell them what kind of orange you wanted. It should be an orange of this shape and size and definitions. So have those definitions, but the definitions are directly related to the problem that you narrowed down after discussing with, with your stakeholders out in the market. So your decision making skills, your problem, you don't have to be very, very good at problem solving. Your problem solving will only come into picture if you want to prioritize something part of it because of some reasons, right? Analytical, you should be really, really good with in managing the expectations of your stakeholders top down. It just all, all the ways, right? And then you should be able to justify once you make the decision, you should be justified why this is business for business going to work. Because if, if your expectation that I'm going to go into a meeting and present the business proposal saying that this is going to work, another 101 questions will be there. So think through all permutation and combinations, the questions that you can anticipate from your business, you know, leaders who's, who are going to invest money in the pro, in the proposal that you're coming through. So have thorough knowledge about it. So when you think about this, your length and breadth will be much more. Okay, you just don't have to get in deep. You just don't have to know the solution for it, like I said, right? Think about all permutation combinations, all the factors. And I talk about environmental, okay? Um, the uh, country-specific issues that have happened, the political situation, for example, Ukraine and Russia, right? I mean, many companies have stopped their products shipping into there. But the few went here and did that, right? So you should be able to make the decision in terms of whether it's the right thing for you to launch or not to launch there. This is just an example. So you as a product manager should have a very, very broader perspective about not only about the the problem that you're trying to solve and the other factors are going to impact the decision on why you want to launch a, launch a product. Your why should be important, okay? So please focus on that. Now I'm going to keep leave aside the technical part of it, right? For example, the AIs and MLs tomorrow, something will come through, okay? That you'll pick, you learn as the need demands and we'll, we'll make progress there. But then, and, and the usage of the tool, what kind of tools I should be really using? I'm adapting to them on the faster basis because the tools are going to give me different kind of insights. They will become an important source for me to make the right decisions at any point of time. And how do you define the roadmap? Are you really good at explaining explaining your roadmap to the stakeholders who are really interested on it, right? So work on your communication skills because I would just 
while, while driving uh, from, from home to here, I was thinking, what really changed in me? A couple of years back, if I have to address a group of, uh, I would say strangers, because we're all meeting for the first time. You will I'll, strangers. I'll, no, no, no. <laughs> I, I will freeze. My limbic brain will just freeze. I, I couldn't even open my mouth. I just, there. I invested time in coaching on how to improvise on my communication skills, okay? To make sure that what I'm saying and what, how my body is reflecting are one and the same. Because otherwise it can go into different directions, right? So please invest in all those things. And at the same time, be humble. Because failure is part of the product management. Like she already said, title and content are entirely different. Okay? So please be make sure that you're willing to take the risk. And have the courage to face whatever the situation is. Learn from it and try to move on. These are my life examples. Sharing with you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Something I would love to add to that to be a little later is uh, proximity to the customer. Uh, I would say as a product manager, uh, the maximum value you bring to the organization is with your knowledge of the customer, right? So it's actually sitting down with the customer and having those interactions, right? On an ongoing basis, right? How often, I, I know half of you are at least PM. So how often do you talk to your customers? If it's daily, raise your hand. Nice. Weekly. <laughs> nice. Rarely. <laughs> so you definitely want to aspire to, if you're, you know, if you're rarely, you want to aspire to be weekly and then daily, right? Uh, because that is the value you bring to the organization. Uh, you want to make sure that your company is building the right product that customers are ready to buy and use. Right. So often cust companies build products because they can, right? Or because competitor X or Y has done it. But that, those are really not the, you know, the good reasons to build X, Y, or Z. So you want to be that voice of the customer in the room at all times. Yeah. On, uh, on this point, the voice of customer, you may not be able to sit every day with them, but you opening that channel for them to communicate to you is very important. Say that you have a website and you enter one niche saying that, contact me if you have any issues. So they will write you. When you want, you have maybe 10 p.m. in the night, Friday night is your free time. That's when you can just go to the inbox and take out all the emails. You have, you have to create mechanisms. How can you collect customer feedback is the the first thing, otherwise you are moving far away because you will only stick to, you, you think you are the customer. But the consumers don't react like that. So making sure that you have some paths to bridge, you are safe. Okay, now, um, again coming to Purnima, uh, because I know collaboration is everywhere, it is important, but how is it different from your MNC job to the startup world, how is it collaboration different you feel today? How important is collaboration? Because already you mentioned about collaborating with mentors, collaborating with people, but how do you do that? Well, collaboration is much easier if, uh, like Naina was saying this morning, right? If you're all sitting at a desk, it's easy. at a co-working space, I can just tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, what's going on with support ticket, right? Or I can ask you, hey, what if you're in sales, I can ask you, what, what's going on with the pipeline? I don't see the numbers, right? And maybe it's just a casual chat. We have a cup of coffee together and we, we build that relationship. Right? And if you all have, how many of you all are going to office Ah, nice. Okay. At least half the crowd is going to office, which is great because you can actually meet people, right? Like say, hello, how are you doing? Right? Take somebody out for lunch without an agenda sometimes, right? Without an agenda, just build a friendship, build a friendship. And I think that's because when people start caring about you or if somebody cares about Divya or somebody cares about Vijaya, they will do things for you, right? It's all about asking for favors, right? Especially in product management, like when you've got all the responsibility and none of the authority, right? It's all about favors. Like, hey, I did this for you last quarter. <laughs> <laughs> so she's basically talking about the handshaking mechanism. They were half-minded and just because of 
the handshake you did last time may be a favor this time. It's, it's, yeah, so, because it's all prioritization at the end of the day and you are confused between two and this might give you a boost to it. Yeah, I agree that. And depending on which departments you're working with, right? I mean, uh, for me uh, in product marketing, a lot of relationships I have to build with sales because sales is my internal customer. So, you know, I take them out for lunch. I ask them what's going on. How is the new product doing? Are you happy with the product? You know, are you feeling confident about the product? Just getting that real feedback from my customer and asking them, hey, okay. do you, what do you need to make this product successful? Tell me. Tell me two things I can do for you today that will make you successful. Do you guys do this today? <laughs> okay. Um, now to Vijay, I see um, you're talking about the essential skills. Now, let's let's bring women ankle for a, for a minute. What is the unique problems? I, I know Naina has bought a list of problems in her career journey. What are the unique problems you faced as a woman? May not be because of we are, we are women, but just because of human we faced it, we won't face it. And how did you overcome that? Um, the way I look, I think it kind of, uh, I come across a very strong person, so people don't try to intimidate me in any way. So the problems are little less, maybe. Okay. Um, having said that, having said that, I think uh, we, I, we kind of uh, give ourselves, uh, because uh, uh, you've been told you're going to be like this, like girl, like this, like that. I mean, where are these definitions coming from? You know, uh, earlier when we were growing up, you know, I don't know how uh, the age group here, but I'm a little old. So when, you know, my, when I was growing up, you know, you need to be grown like this for so and you need to be doing this, etc. But I kind of, um, for whatever reasons, I, I was always being a black sheep in the family. So I kind of started breaking some point of time. But again, I used to get beatings. That's a different story. But then what happened is I never tried, I never felt, uh, even if it was there, I never felt the need that, you know, somebody's trying to do this for me i'm just a human being okay this the i am really really proud of of that i'm a woman and i have a every for all of us you know all the women here we have the ability to empathize care nurture okay and if, if possible beat up i'm talking about children i'm not talking about husbands or partners here so you know, we, we can do all of things because we need to make sure that just going in some direction right so we can do all of them and i think i use that as an advantage i never give an impression to a man out there hey i'm, I'm competing with you no this is who I am and this is what I want. How can you help me? And you tell me with my skill set and the traits I bring in, bring in as Vijaya, tell me how can I help you? That's it. I think it worked out every time, but at the moment I see, um, because like, like I said, I think the personality kind of made sure that they don't you know, cross the line at <laughs> a point of time. Um, but uh, I think it worked out. If you ask me, the problem, the problem was in my head, huh? Sometimes I would go back and think, oh my God, I'm not, because I was told in childhood, a girl is not supposed to be like this, right? So that, that would come back often like a movie trailer, something like as a cartoons, for example. They would come back and play, my mom said I should do that. But it took some time to break that, okay? And like, you know, for all the things that you've listed in the quote, uh, challenges, the last line item, right? It, it always comes back to me. But then I ask myself, what to do? I'm born like this. I'll change. Okay, and few things are uh, need to be corrected and corrected, but few things I love to carry them, they're going to be with me for like that. So I will change accordingly, and the changing is here. I don't expect the other person to change because change is always within ourselves. I may be too much of my yoga speaking here, but that's what it is. So it, it really happens, right? Because the moment you start believing yourself and the change is within you, everything around you will change, whatever meant to change. And I think that worked out. Yeah, on, on a different angle, though, you said that you and your male colleague mm. with same competencies, mm. same goals achieved. Mm. Have you ever felt that they get a differential or they get different preferences over you? in management, mm. upward or downward? Mm. Have you faced and have you, how did you overcome that if you faced? Uh, maybe because of the fact that I never uh, felt the other, anybody of my colleague was a competitor for me. Okay, good point. That's a good point. Yeah. I so it's, you, you're basically talking about how do you take the counterpart, how do you take your PR yes. and how do you work with yes, it? Yes, that's what Thank you. Yeah. Then how about you? Um, the first question or the second oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> The first question, I said woman in product. Okay. How was, is there any challenge you faced? How do you know? Um, I think the challenges are pretty human, right? Like, uh, as humans, we are uh, working ourselves to death. Right? Uh, how many of you have night calls? I'm saying like post 8 p.m. Okay. 
How many of you struggled with it? Okay. Okay. I used to enjoy it. Yeah, almost all of you struggled with night calls. So night calls was a struggle for me as well, right? Uh, because all my stakeholders were in the US, the leadership team, the sales team, the marketing team was all in the US. And uh, so I would have to, you know, have calls 10, 30, 11 in the night. Um, and yeah, it was not, it was not comfortable to have calls every night, you know, five days a week, because I'm, um, that's compromising my time with my kids. Um, so As much as possible, I would try to uh, manage uh, the calls, like I prioritize whether if it's a customer call, yes, of course I take it. If it's a sales sales training that I have to do, of course I do it. Uh, but if it is maybe an internal call with a lot of folks where the team is based in India. And so I'll just write to the meeting organizer and say, hey, can you please schedule this at like India daytime? Like we're all based here. Why don't we just uh, meet during daytime? And, Um, and even skip many meetings. So we, in certain companies, we used to have this rule that hey, if you're coming to a meeting, there are more than 10 people. Um, let's not have more than 10 people for any meeting, right? And if you come to a meeting and within the first five minutes, you realize that you do not really need to be here or that you have nothing to add to the meeting, right? To nothing, no value add, leave. Right. So if it, I'm not saying it'll work for everybody, it really depends on what your company's rules and culture is. But uh, those are things that you can always suggest to HR as well, if you want uh, to see change. So those are some of the things I did to um, yeah, deal with change. Okay. Yeah. Sure, sure. Please go ahead. Uh, can you, uh, you just look at my profile, right? I worked with the majors like Nokia, Accenture, Intuit, and then Harman. We have strong uh, DNI policies in place. So, which means that I think that could be one of the reasons why Divya, I couldn't really connect with the equation saying that, hey, do you have you come across any kind of situations like this? Because everybody was fine tuned to make sure that, you know, this is what the rules are to be. Everybody's equal. Could be one of the reasons why I, um, that okay. experience was nil from. Okay. Now, uh, another question to you, Vijaya. How do you keep updated to what is happening? Is it, well, because you read a lot. Do you read yoga, you read sustainability, or you read product management, or you are lighting? What do you read and how do you get updated with industry? So industry updates is part and parcel of our uh, bread and butter because uh, that's part of our, our you know, 80% of the life that we live on a daily basis. So we have um, our own uh, PM forums in the organization. So I, like I said, I'm really fortunate to have a very collaborative uh, team of uh, product managers who shares on what's really happening around. And we get the news, the news the update. And I subscribe to the many of the posts on, I'm pretty much active on LinkedIn. So we get lots of up technology trends, updates there, what's happening, especially because I'm now in the lighting industry, what's really happening there, what is it we can do. That learning is a continuous journey, okay? Second learning is from the problems our uh, stakeholders are reporting. It's not just the technology upgrade part of it, because those problems are going to pass of my roadmap future yes so Absolutely. that's part of it yeah. and in terms of yoga it's like um, um, have to do your one part of yoga sutra daily or uh, read one stance from bhagavad gita it's uh -huh. like it's like you know brushing your teeth when you do after you complete your yoga just um, make sure you open that book and read it so ha it's, it's on a daily basis that happens uh, and then in terms of the sustainability part of it uh, uh, like i said we when part of as part of the job that i perform understanding sustainability is also a major need because it all dep depends upon how what kind of products that are that are being getting into markets right so it, it kind of become a cycle and it's not easy Just we need to plug and play which one comes where and all, uh, where onto it and, and then see that, you know, we allocate some dedicated time to it. We are saying that these all things are now become part of your life. Yes, they are. Yeah. And Thank how you. about you? Like, um, I want to ask the audience a question. Where were you in 2002? College. College, okay. School, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> That's great. So I started working in 2002, okay. Uh, so compared to that, you have so many opportunities. Yeah, to totally learn. That. <laughs> You're spoiled for choice. I didn't even know the word product marketing back then. <laughs> so it's just a matter of, uh, like Naina was saying, subscribe. You don't even have laughter then. You had a desktop. <laughs> yes, of course. 
stop with the big CP. Not 50 MB. But it was good because you couldn't take work home. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this, this image is for my data. Uh, Rock data. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, yeah. Paid quality. Yeah. Yeah. We, we all had a lot of fun. We made for the night because we had discounted rates. <laughs> <laughs> so right now it's just like you have Slack channels that are dedicated to PMs and PMMs. You have certifications. You have networking events like this. You have IPL right in Bangalore. Right? You have online courses. I mean, the world is your oyster. Go, go, go at it. Right, and just ask up here which is the top three. Which one do you recommend? I'll I'll follow the same. <laughs> That's yeah. it. Thank so, you. Lots of certifications, lot of books. Okay, now we have another fifteen more minutes. We can open questions. Any questions from the audience? I would suggest to pick up topics which we have not discussed, so that maybe you will get that kind of a perspective. The most challenging day, birthday, and the festivals. It's to pull them up. It's for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Most challenging customer day is, um, I remember this call. I had set up this customer call uh, to do market research on a product that we were planning to launch, right? And the customer just goes on and on about the complaints he has and like, I'm not even able to get a word in there, okay? <laughs> I'm just listening. But, that's all he wanted, I realized. He wanted somebody to listen. And for the customer, it doesn't matter whether you're from marketing or product management or customer support, whether you know his or her ticket, they don't care. You represent the company. Now you listen to me and give me a solution. So that's what I did. I just listened. I, because I realized it's our, our five minutes in that I'm not going to get my goal accomplished so let me park it it's okay i've set aside half an hour for this call i'll go to sit through it and i'll make notes and uh, right after the meeting was done i thanked him for his time of course we send him uh, you know complimentary voucher <laughs> that we always do for all our customer research call we sell you know compliments amazon gift cards right everybody loves that so we'll send that of course and i made a detailed note of you know what was the issue at least as far as I could make out. And I looked in uh, Salesforce, who's, uh, uh, who's the account manager, who's the CSM on this account. And I reached out to them over email, uh, just documented what happened. And thankfully, we record all our customer calls. That happens by default. So there's always a recording that you can, you know, you can share with the respective account holders. And uh, made sure that that uh, case was escalated and got the attention that it needed. I'll check back with the CSM. Hey, have you resolved this case? If you haven't, what will I do? I'll just ping his manager, right? To make sure that, hey, this gets attention. Because this is a um, serious customer who's threatening not to renew. They're going to cancel right now. We don't want cancellations, right? Does that answer your question? question on the product management, right? Um, we, we share our examples in terms of how to get, uh, make sure you're grounded in what you're doing and at the same time prepared for the next thing, right? You need to have this conversation with your manager, okay? Keeping it in our head doesn't help because somebody has to give us an opportunity, right? So please have this as part of the conversation going and see if he or she can help you to find those opportunities because at their, their level it's a lot more easier. It also depends upon how well you're connected in your organization. We think, you know, if I keep my manager happy, it's fine. No, 
<laughs> because manager can change any point of time. So you need to make sure that you have a, a connection with the other teams as well. So figure out if there is an opportunity within your area of interest, right? So if it is a business analyst, from business analyst, you want to go to a pro, into project product manager. It depends upon the organization that you're looking out for. In my case, it was a lot easier because a product owner is what was my first step. Then I moved into it. Okay, at the same time, trying to build all the necessary skill set, whatever I can do on my own to have a conversation. The second thing is, if you are from a business analyst, if you think that you are more interested in R and D, I'm sure every organization these days invest in the the innovation labs. Okay, you need to explore opportunities there. But when you ask this question, you are contemplating whether you should do go this way or that way. They are different because if you are a product manager, you are responsible to the end-to-end -end development and everything. But if you go into research and R and D, from research and R and D, you might come up with ideas saying that hey, we prototype something, right? And can you please see that is the viability of this project? That's when the product manager will come into picture. He can take a semi of samples or the concept to the markets and figure out if it is doable or not. So they're two different things. So like I said. Find out where you want to do. Good to have the confusion, because at least it's going to tell us that you're thinking. Okay, please think. You will know, fall back on the same thing. Ask, keep asking questions, but at one fine day you will come to the conclusion where you want to do this in the product filter, product management, or you want to go into the R and D research and then some innovation part of it. Figure that out, because eventually you need to start doing the your own skill gap, the skill will analysis. There's a uh, there's a big methodology available there. Okay, it will tell you this is where I stand today. This is what is expected for these two roles. See, when you, when you do the comparison analysis, at some point of time you will feel good about one of the options. That's a way forward. It's okay if you fail, you come back. You have this option available. Don't worry. Just start there. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, by my voice. Uh, so my question is to Vijaya. Now, with your diversified uh, experience and roles, now uh, I would like to relate it to myself right now. Uh, currently, I'm working as a senior product manager for a fintech company, and uh, which is into payment gateways. But uh, I'm also looking at uh, diversifying my experience as well into different uh, product lines and uh, fintech companies. Now, how do you equip yourself if you need to move from one particular product to another one? Because currently what I'm facing uh, during change over is uh, people who need an experience to move into a different product uh, because they want a ready per investment uh, where you can contribute, start contributing. So what is it that you can do to bridge the gap where you're also learning on the job? At the same time, you're equipped enough. How do you do the preparation of moving to a different, different industry and equipping yourself? It could be books. It could be through channels. Uh, what is the standard practice that we could do? We can quickly adapt and uh, you know, apply for jobs in different industries. Thank you. So your uh, your question, your name, please. Deepa. Hi, Deepa. Thank you. Um, so Deepa, you are going to move into a different industry with the same senior product manager, it's different industry, right? Okay. I also move from a mobile to automobiles to the lighting. Zero experience there. The only thing I sold them is see, uh, this is what I'm good at. This is a skill wheel that, for example, in the way I showed them, I know these are the gaps from a typical product manager role. This is what is listed. Okay, so I know these are the gaps. Maybe you can somebody can organization help me to bring up to speed, right? There, you you need to also highlight the strengths you already have, Deepa, as a product manager, because building that kind of expertise it will definitely going to take some time. So you need to sell them. At the same time, we always need to remember be honest in accepting what you do not know. Because the person who is going to interview you there is much more smarter and he knows a lot more than what I know because I'm new there. Okay? So we need to be mindful of that. But let let the, the conversation be honest, accept it, try to understand about the product, right? Keep making sure that you are adding this post on LinkedIn because that's where most of the recruiting will come from. Okay? You combine that new product saying that, hey, with my experience, current experience I have, I see the new product is evaluating like this. 
So you're creating your branding there itself. I think that could be a good start. I mean, reading books and attending sessions or seminars will definitely have to happen because there is a, like I said, there's always a vocabulary with every changing industry. It's not just the functional uh, role that you're performing, and that's very critical, Deepa. I hope it's going to help you because it, it, it helped me. I mean, it took me two years, but it definitely helped me to be here today. Thank you. Oh, sorry, there's somebody. Sorry. Hi, hi, please, you can. because you are good at defining problem that's your skill okay <laughs> yes developer is good at solving the problem but you are good, good at defining the problem okay you're good at understanding the customer you're good at you know uh, empathy because without empathy you will not be able to connect yourself with the problem out there okay so this is what you're good at right in terms of uh, if you want to fall back onto it like let's not. I mean, like, this is a constant thing. Oh my God, what if it doesn't do? What do I do? So what I'm saying is that, for example, like I I told her, you need to make sure your there is this is our passion, right? But something else also will keep on triggering us. Hey, maybe I should do this part of it, right? I don't know what is that moving. What is in it for you in that other other option? Because we all need to have option B. But then remember, there's something called there's a more power, uh, more options, more power. But it takes a lot of time, and all options are not easily to be managed. Have at least one more alternative available. Keep nurturing it. It's important. So when you do that, you have a fallback fallback option already available. Okay. And I will say that after like um, touch wood, I want to be product manager. Continue to be there. So I will say, Vijay, yeah, you failed. I can go back say I, I'm good at the project management. I'll continue doing that. Okay. Because that I have experienced, right? That's my fallback option to be to be on the discuss that way. So I don't know what is that next thing that you want to do in case this is not there. We do that in our daily lives. So right? this is not working. This maid is not coming tomorrow. We have to find out some option. Okay. We keep our backups ready. Having you know, no, I think some passion is good. But having those backups are also extremely important. So please invest your time in that. Okay, thank you. Sorry, ma'am, you are you had a question, I think. Okay, please go. I'll take a quarter to explain that. A <laughs> <laughs> small, 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 small capsule version is um, you typically define your product strategy along, uh, ahead of your launch, right? So ahead of your launch, as you're putting together your launch plan, uh, product strategy and launch strategy will be part of that. Um, is that what you're asking about? Yeah. Uh, I want to know how often you change and what are the things that sure sure so it really depends on what's working and what's not right so you go to market with a certain strategy you're going to focus on this segment of the audience this particular market and you see what is working and what's not and then if it's not working obviously you have to change it right so the change could come as quickly as within a month of launch or if it's really doing well then you just have to you know double down on it um, yeah, that, that's from a GTM strategy perspective. Uh, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. She has a question. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the missing things from the
So we want to take a dive into your experience to understand how to integrate all of this to make it where we can be seen and put it in front of you. Thank you, Devasita, for that question. But I have not understood anything hundred percent. Let me be honest about it. Uh, but uh, to answer your question about how do you uh, how do you integrate product like growth with marketing? Actually, in organizations that I work with, uh, a subset of marketing will actually focus on PLG product like growth because what it helps do is cut down your sales cost. Right, so your customer acquisition cost goes down because you don't have to pay incentive commissions to your salesperson who would otherwise close the deal. Now, PLG will really work well for highly simplistic products, um, right? But it may not work well for a large uh, multi-million dollar enterprise deal. I don't see that happening, right? PLG is good when you are trying to um, sell to SMBs. Right, because you want to do that at scale. So you make the entire experience self-serve and the customer is delighted with that, right? And even that comes under marketing, so you know, it's all good. <laughs> Audience? First question is, who is for the summary of uh, Biology? <laughs> 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 is the last question? Yeah, that will be the last question. So I come from uh, indoor marketing background, so I head marketing. Uh, so uh, I have a two-part question. Uh, number one, uh, since product marketing, uh, they define it that uh, so product marketing is something which should position the, uh, the product, right? So while positioning, I wanted to know uh, what is your thought process when uh, you uh, go to the DPM uh, plan. Number one, and number two. I wanted to understand, let's say the product is already in the market in a different view. So, is it a norm that uh, or is practice where uh, you uh, have a different strategy for different geo, or else is it something which starts with the same strategy which is being applied for a particular geo, or for a particular being uh, better, and then this kind of thing. How is it? What is uh, the uh, thank you for the question. What's your name? I'm Suraj. Suraj. Um, thanks, Suraj. So the first part, I'll take the first question first, which is essentially how do you build your positioning strategy, right? Uh, positioning, I would say, should really come from the outside, right? Um, what you want to focus on is your customer. And what we typically do is we do customer interviews to really hear how does the customer benefit from your product, right? What is the value uh, that they derive and why are they willing to pay for your product? And that essentially forms the crux of your positioning um, statement itself. And your GTM strategy, all of that, I mean, that's going to vary depending upon uh, what your launch strategy is, who you're going after, what you're going after, what is your objective. It really boils down to what your launch objective is and everything kind of trickles from down from that. Um, your second question about is it a different strategy for different geos, I would say absolutely yes. Uh, a resounding yes to that because say you're successful in the Indian market, but you're going to go um, to say the uh, you know West Asia, you're going to the, some of the Middle East countries. And of course you have to factor in for language, you have to factor in for, hey, is this technology prevalent there? Are people going to adopt it? Do they have the same problem? First of all, you want to ask, do they have the same problem that your uh, current current market has, right? So is it even going to resonate there? So you might even want to do just, just like a test launch with a, a select group to see, hey, is this resonating with the audience? And then base your uh, GTM on those results. Does that answer your question? Thank you. So what would your advice be to 
Question, not a product management <laughs> <question>. <laughs> hey, hey, Nisha, thanks for your question. I, I, I would ask you back, like, why do you need, to, what is your objective from hiring? Okay, so, we have the right to the processes for the sustainable is your revenue right you want to look at that um, look at a few quarters of data at least to see whether you're making enough to pay salaries right that's the biggest concern you hire somebody and uh, of course you have work to give them but do you have enough uh, you know to keep their um, paychecks running so look at uh, historical data if you feel like you have uh, enough you're broken even you can spare the cash then why not go for it Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much, lovely women, for joining us today. And thank you, Diva, for moderating the session so well.